Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about some things that might test your patience if you live here in Thailand. Now keep in mind no matter where you're at in the world, you're always going to have a list of things that test your patience. Some countries are going to have a bigger list than others. And I had a really hard time trying to even find things for this list, but I think you will find the things on this list somewhat entertaining. And if it ever happens to you, you'll know exactly what to expect. So the first one on the list, and it so far it has not happened to me, but I see it a lot. You'll see it at the airport, you're going to see it at the malls, you're going to see it at other random locations, and that is double parking. Now, if you're not familiar with what double parking is, and I know a lot of places in the U.S. where I'm from, I've never seen anyone double park. If somebody tried this in the U.S., they're going to end up with a keyed up car and it's going to get towed but it's not the case here in Thailand. So double parking is when you park in a regular parking spot and somebody actually parks behind you. Now the philosophy here is if you do that, you need to keep your doors unlocked and your car in neutral. So if you walk back to your car and somebody has blocked you in, you have to, I'm not kidding, push their car out of the way and back your car up. Now, I'm not sure if the etiquette makes you push their car back. I wouldn't think so, but who knows? It depends on the situation. So all I can imagine is some disabled person or just fill in the blank that can't really move this car, parking at the mall to get something real quick, coming back out and their car is being blocked in. I can't imagine what a pain this would be. I'm sure you could find a parking attendant if there is one who would help you with the situation, but just know it can happen. How to avoid this? So I said it's never happened to my wife and myself, and that is we park far away. You're going to see the double parking happening at some of the best parking spots in the whole parking lot. Of course, everyone wants to be lazy and walk the least amount of distance. So anyway, you want to park farther away and make a longer walk if you want to avoid something like this from happening to you. Now the next one we're going to go over is when you want to order food or let's say you're going into a big department store and you're looking at shoes or you're looking at clothes, fill in the blank. So a salesperson or if you're in a restaurant, a waiter or waitress will come up to assist you. Now let's say you're just casually walking in, let's say to buy shoes and you're wanting to see what all they have. The person will come over most of the time and stand right beside you. And when I mean right beside you, I mean pretty close within, let's say two feet of you and they'll just be standing there and you're wanting to learn, the look at the shoes and you look at them, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm good. And they're just going to stand there and wait until they're needed. At first, you're thinking, boy, I must really be inconveniencing this person because they're stuck here having to wait on me. It's just what they do. They don't mind doing it, but it does take some getting used to, and it does require you to have some patience because I don't know about you, but a lot of times when I'm looking at things, I want to be able to think, and I'm not being able to think with somebody standing there staring at me the whole time including going into a restaurant. They give you the menu and as soon as you open up, they're standing right there with the pad and a pen ready to write something down and their menu has like 15 pages. So you get, I mean, it's gonna be at least two or three minutes before you're able to make your order. I've said many times, oh, pop nung, like just a moment, please. But they, for the most part, still stay right there and stare at you, it's very intimidating, especially let's say you got a group of four or five people you're eating with and they're standing there hovering, waiting for the entire table because you know good and well there's some chit chat going on, not everyone's immediately looking at their menu. Could be 10 minutes before everybody knows what they want and that person is sta standing there staring at you. So that is one thing that you need to be aware of and it can test your patience here in Thailand. Noisy neighbors. Now you can get noisy neighbors anywhere in the world, I get it, but there is a lot of noise going on here depending on where you live in Thailand. So we've lived in three different locations and all three locations have their degree of noise going on. Some of them would be neighbors uh, going outside, partying for some of the festivals, whatever. Some of them you think you've got a house in the middle of nowhere and you're good only to hear all this loud celebration going on because there's a temple not too far away that you didn't know that was near your house and it's extremely loud. 
I'm going to tell you how to deal with this in a minute. And the other thing is that there's street parties we've had before on our streets or in adjacent streets outside of the neighborhood. But there always seems to be a party or celebration going on. And that's great, right? You're saying, oh, that's just fantastic. Not when you live on that street every day. Sometimes you just want to go home and have peace and quiet. So what we do at night is we have a noise making machine, white noise, and we turn it up very loud. That keeps out all the barking dogs, that keeps out all the partying music for the most part, and everything else that will keep you up at night. By the way, if you are one of the people who are planning on moving here to Thailand, we do have a step-by-step -step guide to moving here from your home country, which covers things like what to do about a passport, your visas, how to develop a budget to move here, how to, what to sell, what to keep, what to bring, what to leave, what to do about your mail, what to do about your phone, how you transfer money, what to do about your pets, getting them here, essential apps that you need on your phone for Thailand, for living here, what to do in your first 24 hours, how to get a driver's license and a bank account, all these things. So you're gonna find that down in the description under buy me a coffee and just look for the how to move to Thailand step-by-step -step guide. That being said, the next one was unexpected festivals. They pop up here and there. And again, that's gonna be the same thing as a noise issue, but there are festivals going on all over the place, all of the time, where there be just a Thai community big market with some live entertainment it could be a bar down the road that's now outside and they have this sound system and they're just blaring it and yes it is disturbing everyone everywhere but it's just the way it goes so you're going to need to have some thick skin when it comes to some of these festivals that you'll find all around where you live and stay stray animals we all know if you've been watching any videos about thailand there, there are stray dogs everywhere but it can test your patience sometimes. I'm gonna give you some tips on how not to get bit by any of the stray dogs or the soy dogs is what we call them here in Thailand. That is, even though some of them may be cute and they have a collar on, do not go over there and pet these dogs. They're not used to it, they don't know what you're doing and some of them will bite you. So the way to avoid all this is to leave them alone especially your kids keep an eye on them when they get around the dogs they immediately want to go up to them some of them are sitting right in front of the 7-eleven and they're looking for handouts but you'll see kids especially foreigner kids mostly that will go up to these dogs and start petting them even though they look cute they look like they want to be pet they don't they're not used to it and they will bite so if you're a parent that's very protective of your kids your patience is going to be to the limits if you're allowing your children to pet these dogs or you try to do it yourself because then you're not going to like the stray dogs at all you're going to hate them so the best thing to do is just leave them alone so when you live here in thailand one of the websites you're going to buy things off of is either going to be lazada or Shopee. both of them are fantastic websites i love them but you do need to be careful and this will test your patience on buying knockoffs i'm going to use jbl speakers for an example because this is what happened to me so i looked at some jbl speakers and i looked on the website it looked legit it looked like a jbl speaker the price was fantastic only to receive it and figure out that this thing was a piece of junk it is not a jbl it is a knockoff you think these big websites would not allow the knockoffs to be on their website but they do sell them and if you're not careful we know what to look for now but if you're not if you don't know what to look for you're going to be had you're going to have to return this item which is one of my next things on the list so first let me tell you about how to avoid knockoffs but our next thing is going to be returns but as far as the knockoffs go look for the word like on Lazada it'll say uh, genuine product or it's, it's a guaranteed 100% JBL look for wordage like that if you don't see it then it is more than likely a knockoff and you'll really know by the price and this even goes for batteries we have bought batteries from name brands that said Sony batteries it looked legit it had the Sony name on it it did not say it was genuine Sony product which I missed this just happened a month ago so I keep learning this lesson over and over again I got these batteries and they were just garbage they didn't last at all the MAH on them the the rating on how much power they held was a total lie so you really got to watch these things so we're going to returns now so sometimes you go to return some things 
on Lazada, Shop, whatever website it is, and it'll say on there, returns accepted, yada, yada, yada. So you go to return it and they want to know why. And I put down defective item or let's just say it was a counterfeit item. And you fill that out, you send a picture and you submit your return and they reject it and they don't give any reason and that's just the end of it. So then you have to escalate it, follow the steps and raise cane about it and then it will get resolved. But sometimes the sellers just try to make things harder for you so you don't return it. They're saying, oh, well, we'll just reject it. That means they're going to have to go through these extra steps and hopefully they won't need to re return it or they won't return it because they're lazy. So just know that's another thing that may test your patience here in Thailand. So the next one, and I love this, and this is our gym, but it doesn't matter if it's our gym or other gyms or a restaurant, the same thing happens all over the place. So a gym says, work out here. It's boiling hot outside. We have air conditioner. Great. I'm going to go to that gym. You go to the gym, you start working out. You're noticed. Yeah, they got their air conditioners and they're on. And then you're like, why is it so incredibly hot in here? They got all their air conditioners on. They have the doors open. Now, common sense would dictate air conditioners on, shut the doors. No, the doors are open. Mosquitoes are flying in all the air conditioners going out. I've seen restaurants like this. They got an air conditioner and an air purifier. If it's a smoky season going on and they leave a window open, they leave the doors open. It just blows my mind. It's some common sense things that will just make you crazy. So you're going to have to hopefully have some patience here. The inclination would be to go up there and, and raise some fuss and be like, why is your door open when the air conditioner is on? How much sense does that make? Try to avoid doing that, but just know that these things do happen here in Thailand and will test your patience. And last on our list is going to be the no haves. When you go into a restaurant and they got exactly what you want and you order it, no have. Okay, well then I'll take my second choice to be this, no have. All right, well I'll have this, no have. So they have the no haves on all these things on the, on the uh, menu. And you're thinking, if you don't have these things, why don't you just take them off or put a board up that says we don't have these items or we don't have these drinks for right now. Some restaurants do, a lot don't. Just know these things happen. That's why we're going over these things in this list of things that may test your patience. So maybe if these things happen to you, you can smile about it and say, that's right, Tony with the narrow gate told me this was gonna happen. Well, that's all I have for you in this episode. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. We'd love to have you in the Narrowgate family. And if you feel so inclined, buy us a coffee. It's in the link down below in the description. So thank you very much. And until next time, I'm going to end this by saying thank you in Thai, which is Kap Kun Kap.